Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I wanted to just go over a couple of the different team compositions that you could maybe use or kind of expect to see some success with when it comes to AFK Journey. Uh, again, I'm a little bit criminally <laughs> addicted to the game right now, so let's just kind of get into it real quick. Uh, as you can see here, the only way that I can kind of show you teams right now is through, um, uh, I guess, through the Labyrinth or through the, uh, I guess, the Labyrinth equivalent. Uh, so, as you can see here, uh, I'm doing this on the max level, and there is a bit of a stipulation. You're only able to use characters specifically in this piece of content that, of course, I'm only using just to showcase the units. Uh, if they're legendary plus, um, I'm avoiding using characters that are, like, super, 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 like, there's a low chance of you having them, i.e. a lot of the five stars. But I'm going to kind of give you a couple of the characters or team compositions that I think will definitely help you out uh, in a variety of different content. Uh, but let's just get into it. Uh, so the first team that I think a lot of people will have a lot of success with uh, is probably going to be the team that I think they kind of kind of force feed you into. And that's as soon as you're basically able to pull for 30 characters in this in this game, uh, you will very likely have access to a healer, whether that's Rowan or not. It is what it is. But you are very likely going to have Cecia, who's arguably just the most overpowered uh, DPS in terms of early, mid, and still usability, uh, even late game. She does a lot of damage. And even though she doesn't have a banner to forcibly pull her, like Vala, uh, you can purchase her uh, as a, you know, as a, or you could purchase her imprints, uh, I believe, from the arena shop. So great value, and the arena shop rotates around a little bit. So just keep an eye out for that if you do want to pull extra copies of her. But so far, very good character. And now, of course, you're probably wondering what pairs with Cecia. And let's say for whatever reason you don't end up having someone like Rowan. Uh, well, a combination that includes stuff like uh, Lucius alongside Faye is still also really decent. And of course, you're probably wondering how you round out your composition. Well, there's a couple different ways that you could do it. Uh, personally, I find that if you still need more support with Damien, uh, he does very well. And again, if you have a double healer composition, sometimes it feels like uh, Lucius has a lot to bear. So you may want to run something else instead of double healer as opposed to double tank one healer in a DPS. Uh, but generally speaking, I think that when you have a, a dedicated DPS or a dedicated healer uh, alongside two, uh, two tanks, it finds... A bit more success or a little bit more ease in terms of your front line just because uh, even if you end up using Lucius who I believe most characters or most accounts should have access to Lucius not only acts as a tank but he also provides protection and a shield to his fellow tank or co-tank at the same time so I'll just kind of take a look and I genuinely have not really seen exactly how strong this will be and of course uh, just as a disclaimer for or a disclaimer for all these team compositions if you are punching a little bit too far above your range, if you're trying to hit something that's 20, 30 levels above you, or if the the stipulation or the the indicator or the rule set or the theme of the fight is that you have to clear a bunch of mobs AOE or survive, of course these compositions may need to be adjusted a little bit, either for uh, having more DPS, having more AOE as opposed to single target, etc, etc. But again, enough stalling. Uh, let's try and see what a double tank composition. Uh, double tank composition, I guess, looks like. Uh, I'm actually, I guess, maybe not a double tank composition. I'm gonna run a four light composition and see if we even use Valen, who a lot of people I think kind of get rid of Valen as soon as they can because although he's a rogue, he's not like a tank. He's not like a mage. He's not a damage dealer or anything or like a you know like a mage AOE damage dealer. Uh, but let's just take a look. Uh, again, in terms of like flexibility, I mean, I'm just absolutely, I'm just, I'm just kind of stomping this probably due in part because of, you know, like the, the combat point difference, but even in Labyrinth 4, which is arguably supposed to be one of the harder Labyrinths uh, to showcase off, uh, this does pretty good damage. And now obviously, depending on what you take from this, uh, the strength of your characters will adjust. But you can kind of tell like the or where the strength of the composition comes from. Again, you have like a very suitable front line that allows your Cecia and the back line to kind of go to town and is kind of free to either summon Mr. Carlisle or just get out random attacks with her, her basic attacks. Uh, it also helps that again, Mr. Carlisle alongside a double tank composition. So if we decide to take this out and we use someone like Odie, instead of having two healers, we decide to use like two frontline characters like Entendre alongside Odie. Uh, you can see just, uh, I mean, you may not see it as much because I'm obviously overgeared, but you'll see that like having two frontliners makes it damn near impossible 
for your backline to get touched at all. And of course, even if they were taking a little bit more damage here, you could see, right? Like there's Mr. Carlisle, who's one of the main, not only just a main damage threat, but also a tank threat alongside the two other tank threats that are obviously kind of, uh, beefing up and kind of not really taking too, too much damage. Uh, a, a very common weakness that I think I've, I've seen from a lot of people that are asking or requesting for help uh, from the, like, the Team Up channel is that sometimes they just don't run enough tanks or they don't run enough, uh, you know, kind of supportive characters or they just aren't uh, using specific or they aren't adjusting their compositions. They kind of just want a one-size-fits-all composition. And that's why if we are uh, if we were to pivot a little bit in terms of composition, I could definitely see the value in uh, running someone like Leica, who's also another AoE. Uh, if you see or if you find yourself needing even more AoE uh, than before, I definitely think that having, again, at the very minimum, uh, someone like Leica. And again, if you are lucky enough to pull for Roman on your 30 or if you do end up spending 99 cents, which is not, again, for some for some players, I get it, you want to be free to play, but I've also seen the argument that arguably, you know, the 99 cents to, to gain access to Rowan is pretty high value. But in any case, uh, if you do end up uh, pulling for Rowan or you get Rowan, I think Rowan pulls together or gels together a lot of compositions very well. Again, if we're just using Lucius as your frontline, uh, he synergizes very well, of course, with uh, uh, alongside Rowan, assuming that you can make the faction bonus. In this case, I'm going to just use Rowan because I think that if you do need AoE, uh, having again, well, I guess technically speaking, we can just run three faction bonus here, but again, generally speaking, uh, having three faction bonus either through wind or having it through the light element, or is this even called wind wilder? I apologize. It just looks like a green leaf, which is why I think it's le uh, wind. But if you have wilder alongside, uh, or if you have a uh, wilder or three wilder or three light alongside another faction bonus, it's very, you know, it gives you additional stats. You can see here at the top, you gain bonus percentage to your total stats. Uh, but the actual, uh, the actual kind of issue with a lot of early game compositions or trying to adhere to the faction bonus is that ultimately, if you have Cecia, uh, you will end up having to wait until you pull another undead character, i.e. Uh, one of the scythe characters or one of the healers or get really lucky and get someone like Thorin, uh, who's, in my opinion, the strongest knight in the game. Uh, or the strongest uh, tank in the game. You need a way for a character like that to really see a uh, great faction bonus value uh, when it comes to the character. But as you can see, Faye does a load of healing, or she, you know, she provides a decent amount of healing. You have Laika, who again is kind of just blitzing through the backline. Uh, AoEs uh, the entire, you know, the entire enemy team. And this, alongside Cecia, does incredible, or you know, does incredible amounts of, or gives incredible amounts of value. Uh, We'll do an even harder gate, technically speaking. And again, as you can see here, this one is more of a protect or like a protect like the frontline or, you know, protect the crystal kind of composition. And this is a scenario where arguably uh, you may want to keep someone like uh, Cecia in the back line, but you do probably want to have like a dual frontline composition. So in this case, I'm probably going to use someone like uh, Entendre and I guess I could try and not use Cecia. Again, I don't really recommend not using Cecia. But I am going to try and see if the value from having the faction bonus outweighs the value of, again, having Cecia. I don't normally do this. However, sometimes, and another really big bonus to kind of testing out different compositions and the fact that you have unlimited tries in content like this, is that, of course, there is going to be like certain scenarios where you win a little bit easier or there are certain, there are certain compositions where or certain runs where some things just line up correctly and then... Boom, you've got to clear. However, the compositions that I've been recommending thus far are pretty much, uh, I would say they're pretty solid. Again, uh, we have double AoE here, or we, I should say, we have AoE here. We have a single target dot in case if we need additional damage. We have the healers. Uh, these are 32,000, which makes them obviously very tanky. Let's take a look at just how much damage they do or if we can survive through this, uh, through this kind of survival, uh, protect the crystal composition fight. Uh, but of course, as you can see, uh, we have Entendre who's taking a load of damage or kind of getting immobilized and actually it might not be so good that my characters are so close to each other. Oh, uh, we've got the barrier though and assuming that Fade doesn't get knocked down again, hopefully she's able to heal. Uh, but it looks like generally speaking, oh, well, we cleared it. <coughs> All right, well, there's, oh wait, no, we didn't. Oh, they were bashing the crystals. That's what, that's what was going on. Oh, I was wondering why it, it was so, oh, they're dead. Right, well, 
this guy's got 65,000. Uh, <laughs> was not kind of expecting that. However, uh, there's a chance that we still clear here. Kind of running off the script here. Uh, all good though. Uh, doing this in Labyrinth is going to be a little bit more difficult, of course, because like when you take harder content or when you are kind of messing around with certain compositions, uh, inevitably you're going to get one shot. Now, in Labyrinth, this is a bit more punishing. However, in general, you only do Labyrinth kind of once or twice, and then you're kind of you're kind of done with the run. You don't stay in Labyrinth for nearly as long as, uh, or you don't stay in Labyrinth nearly as long or you don't experiment in labyrinth nearly as much as you'll experiment in the real world where again if you're trying to clear like a chest or clear something like that uh it is going to be a little bit easier or you're going to feel less burden or less punishment when you fail uh but we ended up clearing the stage anyways um again Cecia is kind of really really ridiculous in terms of you know her value to the team again because she has mr carlisle but right now, what the insanity of our team composition is right now is that we don't have a tank whatsoever. We can't revive them. Uh, generally speaking, again, unless if you are very, very, uh, like, tuned either with energy or with your, like, supports or stuff, it is very, very difficult to actually be able to survive encounters without a tank. But I think... Not even, I think, because Mr. Carlisle is coming out so quickly because of our, our you know, like the labyrinth bonuses and stuff like that. Um, obviously, it's going to look a little bit better and almost even arguably more optimal to not run a tank. However, you do have to keep in mind that, again, this is not really going to be the case, especially in the overworld. Again, if I show you the overworld and the reason why I'm not showing you the overworld compositions right now is because they're like level 108 and I'm level 80. So... I'm getting gear gapped a little bit, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, however, again, uh, the arguably like the the best compositions to run right now, uh, as you can see through kind of the teams that I've been running, uh, they all involve basically a two tank or one tank with two support uh, frontline or a one tank with a uh, another bruiser akin to maybe like a Brutus or someone. Uh, like a like another warrior like uh, Iron who can CC uh, and Iron himself also has a kind of self-sustaining shield and depending on what composition you have guys uh, again you can move out characters like Lucius for uh, for you know like uh, Thorin but these were kind of the compositions that I thought uh, worked the best I apologize some of them died but generally speaking uh, to kind of recap it Lucius Fey uh, Lucius Fey alongside Cecia is a pretty nice starting kind of lineup, and then you can kind of uh, choose and pick between the undead characters that you want. Any of the undead characters, honestly, so long as they buff up your CCS total faction bonus, are pretty fine. Uh, personally, I find that running an additional healer or additional tank, which, again, arguably you can or can't get because Doran is a 5-star, uh, is obviously going to be most ideal. However, guys, uh, in terms of value... Uh, just always, again, make sure to have two tanks, unless if there's like a very specific scenario where it feels like the tanks are getting one shot anyway, so you may need, a, you know, someone that is more aggressive uh, to kind of pull through and kind of eliminate the enemy backline targets as well. But generally speaking, that's not the case. And again, two tank composition with a healer, two DPS, uh, that's going to be your go-to, whether it's AoE or single target, that's up for debate. But Cecia is probably going to be a mainstay no matter what. Anyways, though, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I apologize. I wish I had uh, a few more locations that I could showcase off the characters. Unfortunately, though, I don't. Uh, I kind of have to just show you through Labyrinth. But Labyrinth has a few additional, you know, tweaks and fixes to it, like gaining more stats. So how realistic or how unrealistic it is uh, will kind of depend on, again, uh, the content that you're clearing. However, I will say as a, far, as a final parting note, if you are doing the world boss, things change very quickly, and they there are some recommendations for the characters that uh, are strong for the for the current content. And for today, specifically for today's daily fight, uh, what I actually found to be the most helpful, and let me just quit out of this. Let me just show you the composition that actually I ran for today's uh, for today's dream dream boss. So for the dream realm, I'm ranked 16 right now. I haven't tried. Uh, hard enough, to be honest, to, to kind of get through it. However, I ended up using Kruger, who is this, uh, who is this, like, uh, he's just a warrior that has defense penetration or defense down. I have Coco because there is, uh, damage reduction and, of course, like, you don't want to die. I have Smokey and Meerkat. I have CC, uh, for damage, and then I also have Thorin, uh, for tanking. Now, again, in terms of, uh, whether or not you're going to have a lot of these characters... 
you probably won't. So arguably, if you want to get rid of or move other characters around, you could definitely move out a character like, again, one of the Meerkats for a, a healer, like a, one of the undead healers. However, this is just the composition that I was able to get top 16 with. I definitely think that if you can, though, you should try and run Kruger and Coco if you can. If you don't have them, it is what it is. It's unfortunate, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. Anyways, though, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for supporting all these videos. I really appreciate it. Hope you learned something. If you did uh, enjoy this content or want to talk more about AFK Journey, though, make sure to join the Discord. Uh, chat with me on Discord, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, etc. I will see you guys on the next one. Good night. Adios.